Hey guys, welcome back to the cooling series on the 92 Fox Body. Today we're working on the controller that controls the fans going on and off. Now we could just use a relay with a uh, temperature sensor and have it snap on and snap off as the temperature cycles up and down. I uh, really dislike those uh, setups a lot. <laughs> so let me explain why. Um, there's a couple of reasons really. So one is you have a really, usually a really high powered fan on a hot rod that draws a lot of current. And every time it snaps on, it puts a load on the motor, you can hear the RPMs noticeably dog down and then kick back up. And if you have a cammed motor, sometimes that effect can be even more disruptive. And the other thing I really don't like is how loud the fans are. It, you know, they snap on and then you have this overpowering wind noise from your fans when you should just be hearing the idle purring along and the exhaust. So instead, what I wanted to do is build a controller that's a lot more precise. And what it does is it turns the fan on softly. Uh, which is just like it sounds. The fan's going to turn on slowly and then sp and speed up, you know, as the temperature climbs. And that it completely eliminates that hit when the fan turns on. Instead, it comes on uh, real soft, speeds up, and then we also can control the fan speed based on temperature. So we can hold a constant temperature. Maybe we like the car sitting around 180. So what will happen is the fan will speed up as the temperature's coming up and the fan gets faster and faster. And eventually you're going to hit an equilibrium point where the any warmer and the fans too powerful and any cooler and the fan slows down and you'll see you have a nice constant temperature and the fans are quiet you can't even tell they have fans on it's it's really nice you don't have that overpowering loud noise you just hear the engine and the exhaust so for this project i didn't want to build something completely custom so i, I wanted to get some off-the-shelf parts so let me let me go over some of the actual hardware that i decided to use okay starting out the heart of this is going to be this, this fan speed controller right here uh, pull this out of a junkyard. You can get um, these from, I think it was 07 through 10, uh, Ford Fusion, Milan, there's the Lincoln Zephyr. Um, there's quite a few different vehicles that have it. There's even a Chevrolet version of this and Corvettes and such. I snap the harnesses off as well so you don't have to sit and use spade terminals and try to connect on there. I just cut the harness out of the uh, junkyard and we can plug that right in. What this does is it can, can send high power to a fan and it has a soft start feature built into it. So the fan will turn on softly and then you can control the speed of the fan. So that takes care of the bulk of the heavy work, which is nice. Uh, but we need to actually control it and it works with a pulse width modulated signal that you feed it based on temperature to control the speed. So we're gonna take a GM10 sensor and we're gonna stick that somewhere on our motor coolant so that we can get the temperature. Then we're just gonna build a controller using something like this. This is just a little Arduino. Uh, these are super cool. They come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, you know, that final product will be a tiny one for compact little box in the car somewhere. We can use something bigger for demonstration purposes and, you know, figuring out how this is going to work. So the idea would be that I'm going to hook up this temp sensor to my Arduino. It's going to take readings off of here and it's going to figure out what temperature my coolant's at. And then it's going to have an output that's going to go to my controller here and it will send a pulse width signal according to how fast I want the fan to go. We can also feed it other inputs like from our AC compressor. So when the AC turns on, we can have the fans come on. And uh, you could get you know crazy and, and feed it like throttle position sensor and when you're going wide open throttle, cut the fan for maximum power to the engine and a variety of things like that. I th think that's a little overkill for this project and for just a sort of street fun car, not a full out race car. I'm gonna leave that out. One thing I will add is an input from perhaps the uh, fuel pump relay so that the fan only runs when the engine's running. That way when it's just key on, you don't have the fan running, draining your battery. Okay, so here we have the basic setup. I decided to use the little Arduino Uno for demonstration purposes here. It's kind of a mid-sized one and easy to connect wires up to. And I have a little circuitry going on here, nothing too complicated. Essentially, we just created a voltage divider right over here for the uh, temperature sensor and we have a little transistor just to up the current to drive the fan speed controller. We have a GM temp sensor right there hooked up so that we can feed in the temperature. And down here we have a car battery with that same style fan that we put on the car with one of these uh, fusion speed controllers. And we can go ahead and see how all this works. And you can see I added the little LED display. I thought that would be kind of interesting. It would show me the temperature of the sensor and it, it toggles to the duty cycle of what the fan is running. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in here and just power it up. And you can see right now, <clears throat> excuse me, 81 degrees, 
let me see if I get that in focus. And the fan is not running, which I just chose to put a couple, couple dashes. And you know, when I'm wiring this in the car, just for some troubleshooting help, I did things like, so for example, I'm gonna disconnect the, the temp sensor. And you'll notice now, you get an ERR. It also says 90. You see that it sent my fan to full speed. On those particular fan speed controllers, 90% duty cycle sets, sends the fan to maximum power. And that's a backup feature. In case the GM temp sensor fails, or is unplugged, or something goes wrong, rather than your engine overheat, it automatically just sends the fan to full power, and that way you can know right away to go troubleshoot or find the issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook that back up. To demonstrate this a little better, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the temp sensor, and I just have a little variable potentiometer here. This is basically just a variable resistor, so I can turn the dial and simulate different temperatures so I can show you the operation. Okay, so I have it plugged in instead of the temp sensor, and let's see if we can see that, get that there, yeah, 56 degrees. And I'm gonna turn that. I think I have the trip point set up around 150, 140, and creep it up just a touch, 153. And it says 14%, and there we go, the fan turned on. So I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. Let's see, what does it say? 153 Fahrenheit, 14% duty cycle. Now we're up to about, you can see yeah. that. We're up to 70% duty cycle. 187, I'm gonna crank the temperature up a little more, 90%. Full power. And then I'm gonna turn it down. You can see how the fan spins down. Something else I didn't point out is I have these two wires right here. This one represents the fuel pump relay and this one represents the air conditioning. I have the fuel pump relay one hooked up to positive power and that enables everything. It's acting like the engine's running and I can move the AC one over and you'll see it'll, it'll even though it's 112 degrees on the engine, there we go, 50% and I can turn the AC off and there's actually a 30 second delay and that's so that as the AC compressor cycles in and out, the fan doesn't just turn on and off, on and off. Okay, now that we have a whole working model, now it's time to build this into something a little bit more compact. So that Arduino over there is kind of large. I have a smaller version of it here called the Nano. You can see how tiny it is by comparison. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I found something in these generic boards and it looks like we can just drop this in there. Push it right through, go ahead and solder it up. I'll probably design a little box to put it in and then we can install that in the car. This display, my original thought was I'm gonna go ahead and just put this inside the box itself. So I think this might be more useful displayed in the vehicle somewhere. I don't really like the idea of this red LED on my dash, but maybe in the center console inside perhaps the little door on the Fox bodies where you have that ashtray that nobody uses. Maybe I'll just build a little panel and just hide it in there so I can just flip the panel up. So here you can see I have most of my circuit assembled up at the top there in the blue. I also have my original prototype below and I'm still uh, demonstrating and testing and validating, looking for bugs, making sure the circuit's robust, nothing's overheating. And uh, you know, those are valid concerns, of course. It has to live in the dash of a car, which gets really hot. And I did notice, for example, one circuit I was had there, a voltage regulator was getting up to 130 degrees Fahrenheit, you can see here. So I ended up redesigning portions of it and I got it down to where it was just about ambient, a little above ambient, which is a lot more efficient. It's gonna work so much better. Um, also went ahead and did some calibration on the sensors and circuitry. Uh, there's a couple of ways. I usually do the boiling water and you can do freezing water because those give you known values, uh, especially if you're at sea level, for me, 212 degrees boiling. And I can dial things in and make sure that my uh, sensor is accurate. Here's a little enclosure I designed for our little project. You can see it's got some holes for USB port, cables and cooling. Um, got the lid on there, take the lid off. You can see inside, a little screw hole to mount down the circuit board. Uh, on our lid, I went ahead and put a ridge on the underside so it helps snap in the box and secure it tightly. Then this little guy here is for the center console where I'll put the LED display right in the ashtray. Let's go ahead and make it. All right, got some of the stuff 3D printed. Got the little plate that goes into the um, center console of the Fox where the uh, ashtray is. I'll show you that in a second. Got the little pins on the back with the little bumps over there. So this guy will sit in there and look, um, sit up there flush. 
I'll drop it on those little pins and then I'll probably just dab a little bit of silicon on there. So that'll look pretty neat in there. I uh, made a box for the controller itself. There's a little piece right there for the circuit board for a hole for a screw, so we'll drop that in. Notice I did the little opening for the wires to just drop in. USB port right here. And then <clears throat> I made a little window for some heat dissipation from the uh, voltage regulator. I don't know that it's really needed, but it'll help out. It does get fairly warm. Got a lid and uh, that'll snap right on to the screw holes and we should have our package together. Here's the center console piece. I got it pulled out of the car. So this piece with the uh, LED is just gonna drop right in there. It'll snap down in there because of the ridges I put. And that's basically it. And then you'll we'll be able to shut that or open it and we'll have a display, LED display right there. Should look pretty good. And here we have the enclosure. All closed up, buttoned up, ready to go in the car. So yeah, I put the quick connect ends on there. That way I can just pre-wire a harness in the car and just plug the unit in or pull it out anytime I need to service it. So there you have it guys, hope you enjoyed that. Now I know that was not a detailed step-by-step -step of how to build your own controller. And that's not really the direction I'm wanting to take the channel. That could have easily been an hour plus long video going into the intricacies of the Arduino and programming and learning it, learning the CAD software, learning how to use a 3D printer, that's not really where I want to go with this. I'm hoping to keep this at a higher, more entertainment level for you guys. We'll kind of move through. I do throw out some tech info and give you the high level overview. So those that are inclined, you can get some ideas and run with it and make your own. Uh, so I hope you guys can appreciate where that's going and, and how I'm trying to take the direction of the channel. So uh, let's enjoy and we'll get this installed next time, as well as throw in some gauges and a few other upgrades along with uh, keeping Bruce in mind for the future. See you next time.